Hello everyone, D. Alfred Ostrowski here. In this recording, I'm going to be giving a demonstration of token vesting using the move programming language and being driven by TypeScript. I'll be doing this on the Aptos development framework as usual. And I'm going to be following an example in this presentation from this Medium article that I found, writing your first con smart contract on Aptos, a step-by-step -step guide by Samundra Karki. Forgive any mispronunciation if there is any. So I'm gonna be taking the smart contract from this article and a slight modification to the TypeScript provided, and I'm going to be implementing it in the same fashion that I've implemented prior tutorials with onboarding tutorials and some of the other examples that I've done on the Aptos framework. As usual, I'm gonna be running this on Amazon EC2, and I have everything completely documented on my associated GitHub account, starting with the readme install file on the base project directory. So I've taken the uh, initiative to already start an instance on EC2. If you don't know how to do that, or you don't have any prior exposure, or you this is the first video off my channel that you're watching, I would suggest that you go to some of my earlier videos where I stepped through that. But for brevity, I omitted that. What I didn't omit is I, the installation. So I'm going to run through that. I forgive for that if I watch prior videos, I'm going to step through that again. I want to keep this current and I want this to be able for you to implement it, hopefully in the same time that it would take to watch this presentation that you'd have a working copy of token vesting. So what is token vesting? Okay, this is managing the trustless, trustless application of moving in this case, tokens from one party to another party or between two accounts, okay? And we're gonna be relying on a resource account and we're gonna be implementing it in a different fashion than I did with the prior example with resource accounts that I did on this channel. In short, you're gonna be taking a lot of the work that would be handled in TypeScript and we're gonna be pushing that directly down to the move module and providing signing capability and allowing it for it to do the allocation all on its own. So let me get started with the installation and we're going to implement the compile and publish of the move module then pull in the TypeScript and demonstrate it running and then we're gonna break it down. So let me start cut pasting of the necessary uh, code to do the installation of both Node as well as the Aptos uh, development environment. And then we're gonna start as usual with the Node source installation of Node version 20. And as usual, everything is documented, all my references the resources that I use to put this together are included in that readme install file as well. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the installation of software and some of the related support activities here, you might want to look at those resources. Also, I would recommend if you're learning more about Move, there's an online book on Move, and I'm going to publish that link as well. It's perhaps one of the best resources outside of the Aptos developers documentation and maybe some of the documentation that comes with the SUI framework if you're interested in implementing applications on that network as well. But there's not a lot of published work outside of the online resources, but these are pretty good resources to start off with. So we're wrapping up the install of the node source installation, I'm going to do the final sudo app get install for Node.js, and then we can test that and move on to the Aptos developers documentation. So once we complete this, we can test for the copy of Node and proceed forward. So it doesn't take a long time to implement this, and I'm using the same installation that I used prior. So if you've 
performed any of the prior tutorials and you still have that installed on an instance, then you can simply go back to that. The only change or not really a change, but an addition in this case, I did PNPM install and we'll do that just before I run the TypeScript command. Now the tutorial uses yarn. I use PNPM run in similar fashion that the onboarding tutorials and the resources that I found otherwise using move programming on Aptos. So that's why I use that. So just a, simply a little bit more familiar with that approach. So to leverage that again, I'm installing PMPM and I'm gonna put in the Python pip3 installer. We're gonna have the command line interface and we'll be good to go. We're gonna be starting the compile very soon here. So now we're relying on the PIP3 installer in Python. Python's the default with Ubuntu. We're using 20.04 and just very convenient to do that. And this is following one of the paths that were identified in the Aptos developers documentation. So we're not using Python in this particular example, but it's convenient for the install. Tab over to the OK here and let that finish. So we have the PIP3 installer set up, and now I'm going to install the Aptos SDK. And again, I'm using T2. It's very economical, especially compared to Ethereum development, which if you're doing the local um, environments for development and blockchain simulation, it can be a lot more expensive than running T2. So this is definitely a clear advantage towards working amongst blockchain networks. Another advantage with Move is that you have the built-in faucet where you still have to, even on the test networks with Ethereum, you have to use a proof of work faucet and go through, jump through a lot more hoops than what you would otherwise on some of these other networks. Okay, so we clone out the Aptos core and now we're gonna do the Aptos CLI. We're gonna pipe that through Python 3 and then we can start with the init. So it looks like we're, we're up and running. I'm just going to do jump ahead and do the app test in it. I'm not setting an environment file. I'm just using this as a sandbox as usual. Okay, so do an app test in it, and it's going to prompt me for the network. I default to DevNet, and here generated a key successfully, an account rather, and I'm going to save that off and buffer that off here to the side. And we're going to be using that for the compile and build. So as I mentioned prior. Let me shrink that down. I'm relying on two tutorials, the move programming tutorials, onboarding tutorial, as well as the first transaction TypeScript tutorial. And I'm relying on those environments to accelerate the implementation of this particular example. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the hello blockchain directory. And this was installed with the Aptos core as I had just in, put together the built-in examples here. So we're just working with what we already have been dealing with. And so I don't have to recreate a new TOML file or anything. I'm just gonna take an existing TOML file. I'm gonna modify it to suit my needs. In this case, I'm taking the hello blockchain TOML file and I'm going to modify the name. Again, all these steps are identified in my, directly in my readme install. I'm gonna re rename this as token vesting. Oops. I could type it right. And you know here you have a default address. We don't have to put the address in from the init. Now if I did successive Aptos inits, you may find yourself in a situation where the default doesn't work and you have to specify the address. But 
the default right now is going to default to that address. And at least for this example, I don't have to worry about that, but I bring this up just in case you are doing successive development and then you're wondering perhaps why you're getting in there with the TOML file. Okay, so. So now I'm going to go down to the sources directory and I have two move files for the prior examples. I'm just going to pull them out because if I do the compile, in some cases it's looking for successive move files and just to make sure it runs appropriately, I'm going to just put in my single move file. Now I'm using the move file exactly as defined in the example. So I'm going to edit this file, open it and create it as token dash vesting move and just paste in the code and I should be good to go. So I'm going to go back to the main directory. If it will let me, okay, there we go. And now I can take my buffered compile and publish commands, and I'm going to have to change that account address appropriately, right? So you're going to have to go through this, obviously, and update it to get it to work appropriately, right? So, and also we're going to be taking this address a third time. We're going to be embedding it in the specific TypeScript example. So it references the contract as deployed. So. Let me run the compile and let's watch this run here. Just copy this in. I'm doing an aptos move compile named addresses token vesting with the generated address. We got a positive result. Let's try the publish. Same way. And this is following exactly the same process I did for the first move programming example. It's prompting me for the gas fee and gives me a successful completion. So we got a successful compile publish and now we can proceed with the TypeScript. So to use this, I'm borrowing again from what I've implemented prior and what you have with the installed Aptos developers documentation with some of the starting examples. I'm going to go to the examples TypeScript directory and we're going to build it in the same way that a lot of the TypeScript examples were implemented. So let me go to that. Now this is going to be a new file called transfer.ts not transfer other vesting, I'm sorry. And in order to implement this, I need to edit the package JSON file in this particular directory. And this is gonna allow me to use the pmpm command. So go to package JSON and I'm going to go under scripts. I'm gonna add a new entry here. And I copy this off from my, whoops. I have the wrong thing here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So I vesting colon TS node vesting TS, and I want to add the comma above that. So it recognizes the extra entry. And this is following the same fashion as transfer coin, simple aptos token, simple NFT, where I have a the name, TS node, and the TypeScript file specified here. So I'm good to go. So now I'm going to actually create the TypeScript command. And again, I did some slight modifications from what was provided in the given example. So again, if you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, you're going to be interested in going directly to my GitHub and grabbing that file. Because I did have some 
issues getting it running in the same exact fashion. I also put in some modifications here that I'm going to present. Now again, let's get it up and running and we'll go through all the source code. One thing I have to do here is change the token vesting program ID or really the address to our published move module. This has to be updated every time, obviously, right? When I republish it, if I'm using an existing, I can obviously use that, but that's not the case here, right? So we have an old one and we need to replace that. So I'm gonna take from below here, that's my buffered uh, address. I'm gonna cut paste that, put that right in as identified. We're almost good to go. One last thing I need to do is the P NPM install to do that. So don't forget, otherwise you'll get a, an error and uh, run that appropriately. It just take a few seconds to run and it should be able to get that command up and running. And again, I'm just stepping through my readme install. This is right uh, at the base directory of the app test token. Uh, GitHub, and again, I'll include that link so you can follow right along with me as you're watching, hopefully. The goal is, as you're watching this, you come in cold, you'll be able to uh, complete the video with a working copy of a move programming smart contract driven by TypeScript that implements token investing on Aptos. So... And this gives a good perspective, right, to the use of resource accounts and an interesting variation from the last example where we created the command line here. We're doing it internal in the move module. Let's get it up and running. Let's validate a few things on the Explorer to make sure that it is actually doing on some level of what we think, believe it to be. And then we can dig into the code and review that. So let's run it, see if it works here, PM, PM, run, vesting. So I dumped out the ag actual account addresses. This would be convenient if you wanna look up the specific accounts. We got a successful execution of the release fund as well as the create vesting. So let me take the transaction hash and we can look that up on the DevNet Explorer and then even run a variation of that and notice the differences and convince ourselves that it is actually working and we're changing the associated information on the blockchain here, right? So let me go to the Explorer. And I'm going to pull this in. Of course, if you get the confirmation here in results, then you know that you have a successful transaction. So here, I see the create vesting has had a successful execution and it's had run successfully, obviously, on the, the uh, Aptos development framework implementing the create vesting. And you see the amount here, 0 0.001 APT. Okay, so... Here, you have to be careful that in the article, they talk about a thousand. Okay, so this is actually comes down to 0 0.001 APT. So you're going to want to take note of the scaling and make sure that you are recognizing how it's internally represented as compared to the numbers that you have to input that at the TypeScript or in the move module level. Let's go back. I'm going to make a modification to that and we're going to run it again and see the differences. So let me edit vesting TS. And if you notice here, I have a number of different release amounts. So essentially the token vesting, I set up a schedule between two accounts to send a receiver. I want to schedule the allocation of tokens. This is the trustless scheduled payment. And I have four amounts and three times starting with the now or initial time. So these are the times I use right here. I'm gonna comment this out and uncomment another variation of this. And this is a good way to begin to get some ownership here, right? And get some understanding 
of exactly how the code works and how you can begin to modify it to suit your own needs. So here, I took a simply a quarter of all the prior amounts and the total being 25,000 instead of 100. And again, that's scaled appropriately. So I wanted to make sure the scaling is set up in the appropriate, fa appropriate fashion. And let's rerun that and grab another address and match the associated output here. So we got another successful completion. Let me go back and I'm going to grab one of the transaction addresses. And I'm off screen. I'm just going to surgically pull out a little bit tricky to grab that directly from the output and go to the Explorer and let's input that. And we got a successful confirmation here, token vesting, create vesting, ran appropriately, successful operation. You can match up the sender and the smart contract addresses. And we know it's like the F39F. And where did we get that, right? That is the F39F of the account that we generated. So we know that this is our run. Okay, that's represented. So you want to match up those addresses appropriately. And you can do this with the send receiver addresses. We got four addresses in total, right? To begin with, we have the send receiver, we have the address of the contract and the address of the resource account as well to play around with. But here, I want you to take notice, I had 0. 0. 0.00025 as opposed to 001 or one quarter of the total amount of coins that were allocated in the given schedule. So so we have a successful completion. Let's dig into the code right now. And you can take this and go through any number of explorations. And I encourage you to. This is a great way, again, to get the complete understanding of what's going on in the code. You're not going to learn a lot about just reading the code, obviously. First and foremost, you got to get it up and running. And we did that and just point in the direction of some interesting variations that you can test with the DevNet without having to pay any fees or jump through any hoops to get uh, pay for your gas fees and so forth. So let's look at the code. I'm going to start with the TypeScript and then we're going to break down the move module. So let's go into Vesting TS and finally, right, <laughs> take a look at exactly what we're doing here with the code. So did some slight modifications to get this up and running from the Medium article, which again, I would recommend read the Medium article. I think it's excellent. I think actually everything on medium.com has turned into a valuable resource for me, regardless of the topic that I'm looking at. So very high quality articles. If you're interested in computer science or programming application development in general. So uh, I imported the dot environment, didn't really use that. That was just uh, uh, left there. I have some classic imports that I relied on with the onboarding tutorials because I didn't want to read in from the process environment. I wasn't sure that these were going to work. And then this code is exactly borrowed from the given example from the article. And I dumped those addresses so we can read those. And you could do some extra manipulation with the Explorer to test things out. This is where we read in the address of the move module. And then I have two blocks of code. One that is going to do the building of that schedule for the scheduled payments. In this case, we're going to start out with the funding of the account. And again, you're gonna to want to pay attention in particular to the scaling of the amounts. And we're gonna read in that now variable reading in a time function, the date function, and what this buys for us, right? If I have a scheduled payments, but starting at what point in time, right? It's going to have to be started by calling a utility to grab the current time. And that's what we did. I have the release amounts and I have some variations there, right? You can explore that. Just make sure that you take the total amount because they are going to be matched within the module. And if they don't match up, the total amounts to the established total, you're obviously going to get in there. And that's that's checked appropriately. 
So the increments are defined by taking that time slice of the initial start. Let's say I started at 12 noon on a given day, and then the increments, the 3, 20, and 30 are the increments following that given time. So that's what's going on in this block of code that is moving through the time increments and pushing to a release time, somewhat of a stack type fashion. Here I define the invocation of the create vesting. So we got two functions on that move module. One is again creating the vesting schedule and then the one is actually doing the release. And we'll be running through that in the, you'll see the parameters that are being passed in. This will include the second account address, the release amount and time. Those are the two vectors and the total amount, which I modified. And then we have three separate library calls to do the generation and submission of the transaction format in the BC, BCS format. And this is going to return a transaction address that we leveraged in this case to look it up on the DevNet Explorer, right? So that's the first chunk of code. And then the second is performing the release. Here I allocate money to the second account and I do the release fund. And in, in both of these, we have Aptos coin definition. You can have more of a custom token defined as well that they did in some of the module testing and described in specifically in the medium article. And we pass in the account address. And then we have the generate and formatting BCS format and submission. It's important to note, right? We're relying on resource account and that's doing the signing for us. We're pu pushing that down to the move module as opposed to prior implementations among that would be the NFT, your first NFT module onboarding tutorial is comes to memory here of what the variation would be if you want to consider what would this look like? Okay, if I didn't have a resource account, I would have to do a lot of the managing of that schedule up in this TypeScript and manage it from that angle because I would be doing the authorization from that level, right? So let's look at the, go back and finally look at the move module and break that down a bit before we wrap things up. So I wanna go back to my directory here, the hello blockchain. And then let's do that. Oops. I think I can run it this way. Do that. There we go. So here we are back, and now I can go into the sources here and edit my token vesting module, and we can step through this. So at this point, you should probably, you're probably familiar at some level with the module definition. I have the module definition here and the, the associated naming conventions here. I bring in the associated libraries that we're going to rely on using the coin definition, the app test framework accounts, vector, and simple map capability, okay, which I'm going to rely on here. Here I have a structure that's defining that schedule, okay, from one account to a second. I have a sender, a receiver, address, and coin type. These are the three addresses here. <clears throat> that's followed by the vectors of the release times and amounts. We saw that in the TypeScript that's being passed in here, right? And then total amount is, that, is exactly that. That's the total amount of all the release amounts. Resource cap stores the signer capability of that resource account which we're going to be initiating just below this and some of the code here. And then we have the ongoing sum of the released amount. That is that structure. The second structure that's being used among the two functions is vesting map. And this is a storing the seed and resource count address for the capability for the signing of that module, right? I have some 
custom error definitions that are defined here that are associated in particular with the assertion tests that are embedded in the move module. This is pretty convenient than other implementations and let's say with solidity where you have to do all your testing externally. So in create vesting, we're reading in the amounts that are going to go primarily into that schedule, right? The account receiver address really release amounts and times and total amount that we just discussed and associated seeds. Next line is going to obtain the address of the account. And then finally, we're going to create that resource account and store the results investing and investing capability. From vesting, we're going to grab the address from that. And then we are going to create a map associated with the, uh, um, to support the vesting capability. And we're going to move that as it's reference to be referenced to the account. And we're going to use a borrow global to grab an address to the vesting capability to store that into maps. And then within that, we're going to store the seeds and vesting address information. Next, we're gonna create the signer with the capability from our resource account, right? It's gonna have the complete control over the amount in escrow. Next, we're gonna define the length of schedule and associated times and do the associated assertion testing on that. Following, we're gonna work through that schedule, and take the amounts, and match that up to the total amount required. And we're using borrow with the vector command. This is essentially allows us to index it just in the same fashion that you would in an array using I as an index and referencing the amounts working through here. And then we can test that against the total amount. Finally, we're gonna take that schedule and we're going to move it to the vesting center. And that's going to allow that to have the signing capability associated with that schedule. We're going to grab the address of the escrow address, do register on the coin with the vesting signer, and finally support the transfer of the associated information type to that particular coin type. So that sets up the schedule, right? It doesn't implement any of the movement of the funds. It just sets that up appropriately and validates that, right? Next is the release fund function. And this is going to take similar fashion. It's going to take a receiver and sender, right? From where's the start, where's it going? And the associated seeds. And we're going to grab the address of the receiver in this line. And then we're going to borrow a reference to the vesting capability that's stored at the global level. And we're also going to uh, grab the address to the vesting map as well and do some testing to make sure that everything is defined appropriately. We're going to use borrow global to grab a reference to the vesting address. And then we're going to create a signer here with the capability. So we sign that schedule to be established. And then we're doing signing again, authentication, right, of the releasing of that funds. We're going to follow through the length of the schedule and set up amount to be released to set that to zero and the associated timestamp. We're going to work through the schedule and borrow again allows us to reference through the vectors incremented by I and take the amounts and step through that schedule and add that to the amount to be released and set up that total amount. And then register the coin and actually do the transfer and set up finally the released amount as defined appropriately. So, and that's pretty much it. So we have a helper function to return the address. Also, you can do some additional testing, which I didn't demonstrate with the test vesting. That's your built in validation testing, right, for the move module. So, that sums up a brief overview of the move code. We saw it run. We validated a small portion between some successful changes on the TypeScript as input. We were able to validate that on the DevNet Explorer. So 
Again, I wanna mention all this is documented on my GitHub. That'll be associated with this video. So I hope this helps and that you can leverage this towards whatever interest you have in application development in particular, leveraging expanded usage of resource accounts and understanding how token vesting works in the Aptos framework. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye now.